and it just goes to show with a little bit of subtle weathering the finished result really is quite nice. A big hello to you, it's so great to see you and I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you up here to Weir Yard and today I'm going to be talking to you about a way of getting models at a knockdown price if you're prepared to put in a little bit of work. I'm looking particularly today at kit built items that you've probably seen hanging around on secondhand tables at shows and also in model shops where somebody's built a model and not really done the very best of paint jobs on them. And this can seriously devalue any kit, be it a locomotive, be it a coach, or even a wagon. And I managed to pick up one a little while back now where the kit itself was a Parkside Dundas O-gauge van, and it had been built to a very high standard. And that was where the high standard unfortunately ended. It had been painted rather unsympathetically with uh, rather too gloopy paint. So all the rivet detail, the planking detail, everything like that just disappeared beneath a thick layer of enamel. And that enamel had been put on so thick that there was drips, there was runs, and quite frankly, it was the kind of model that you wouldn't have even given a second glance to if you'd have seen it at one of the shows, sat there all forlorn for five pounds in its box. but. With the aid of a product called Model Strip, I'm going to be stripping back that van of all of that badly applied paint. And I'm going to start again from fresh. And yes, you can do this with products. And it can be a great way of having a go at painting and finishing a kit yourself. I'm going to run through some of my top tips for getting a decent coat of paint on there and finishing it off with transfers and a little bit of weathering. And it's going to transform that five pound absolute dumpster fire to something that you can be proud of on your layout. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'm really looking forward to this project. It's a great way that you can dip your toe into the world of kit building without actually having to start from scratch. You can pick up a rather cheap kit that has been hopefully well made, but just not well finished. And with a little bit of work that you can bring them back to life and get a great model for your model layout at a great knockdown price. There are a wealth of different kits available on the market for locomotives, for wagons such as this, and for coaches as well. And they can be really enjoyable to build and provide models of items that are not yet available ready to run. But the thing about kits, and I've always said this, is that you can make or break a model in the paintwork that you do at the end to get the finish. And so often I see on the secondhand market kits that have not really quite lived up to expectation in the painting phase by their previous owners. And this is exactly an example of what I'm talking about. It's a uh, ventilated van that has been built from a kit and it's actually been built reasonably well. Everything's where it should be. I can feel that there's a, a weight being glued inside this. We've got all of the buffers. They are sprung. We've got the wheels, a little bit of surface rust, but nothing that can't be dealt with. You can see here that the paint has been put on far too thickly and it's dripped down and we've got these runs 
and this uh, kind of sandbagging of it against some of the detailing at the bottom. It's run off onto the chassis. It really is quite a mess and this has transformed what would have been a really nice sharp detailed kit into something that maybe would fetch only a few pounds second hand. It's certainly something that uh, would have lost a lot of its value. But you can profit from that if this is something that you find, say, at a swap meet, because I'm going to show you today exactly how to transform this back to the bear kit quite easily and have another go at the painting, either if it's a model that you've done yourself and you're not happy with it, or if you want to pick yourself up a bargain second hand and restore it to the glory that it should have. The product that I'm going to be using is sold for this job. It's called Model Strip and you can pick it up quite readily. I paid £5.99 for this from uh, a uh, model shop, Rails of Sheffield. I found it in pretty much uh, every model shop that there is around that stocks a decent range. But a lot of people swear blind by other products, things like oven cleaner, Dettol as well, uh, brake uh, fluid too I've seen mentioned. I I'm a little bit cautious about using products that can be more and more harmful, that can cause a lot of issues with fumes and such like, and even be harmful to the materials that the wagon is made out of. So I tend to prefer to stick to the products that are sold specifically for this job. But if you're happy and confident at safely using some of these other products, then there's no reason why you can't use those. It's a little bit of a messy process, and even though this is a uh, sold for the hobby product, we've got the warning on there that it is corrosive. So if you've got some gloves, do wear those. If you don't have gloves, then you do need to take other precautions because you do not want to be handling this directly and be prepared to very quickly go and wash your hands if you do get any on you. What I'm going to be doing is I'm first of all I'm going to protect my workspace and uh, I find that actually something like a plastic carrier bag not the cheap ones, not the cheap disposable ones, uh, but certainly the ones like this, um, usually called a bag for life. It's a much thicker plastic and that's perfect for protecting both you for manipulating this if you need to. You can put your hand inside and move the wagon around without running the risk of getting any of this uh, on you. And we've got a second bag as well, which we're going to wrap the item in once we're happy. And this bag I've already checked for holes. That, that can be quite important. So we've got the product here and I'm going to pull the tab. I did buy this a little while ago. So as expected, we've got a little bit of drying out there. And what it suggests is that we add some water and just mix that in. So I'm going to get a paintbrush. I'm going to just mix that up. So we've got a paste now. If this is dry and if it dries out during the process, then you won't get the effect. It just won't work. So with that now worked and again, protecting your hands, I'm going to take that and we're just going to start painting this onto the model everywhere that's been painted and make sure that you work it into all of the detail. You don't want any air gaps up against the model. And this should be safe against uh, any of the common plastics that kits are made out of. So we just work that in, cover all of the areas that have been painted, work it into all the detail. And I'm going to keep doing that maneuvering the wagon around until we've got it covered on every single surface that we need the paint to be removed from. With the wagon now completely covered, all the painted surfaces have had a paste put over them, worked into all of the detail. We're just going to wrap this up. We don't want it to dry out. And then to make sure I've got a second bag. We're going to put it into this as well. 
and we're going to make sure that this is wrapped up so that it can't dry out. I'm going to leave that overnight. It's the following day. It's had about uh, 10 hours to be able to just soak. The bag has kept that moist, which is really important. So I'm going to very carefully now get this out. We've got the bag within the bag and I'm going to be using this second bag just to manipulate it because uh, I don't have a pair of gloves. That's fine. And I've got an old paintbrush, a little bit bigger, a little bit nastier than the uh, other one I used. This is perfect for jobs like this because we're not really too bothered if it gets ruined. It's still moist, which is perfect what we want. So I'm going to start the water off and I'm going to get to work scrubbing and see how much of the paint comes off. The soft bristle brush has ended up, it hasn't really got into some of this paint. I can still scratch it off with my finger. It is definitely softened. So I'm going to move up now to an old toothbrush and really give it a good scrub. If you find after you've given it a good scrub that you need to go again, then that's fine. You can repeat the process to get some of the stubborn deposits off. And on a wagon such as this, I had to do just that. It really was painted quite thickly with, um, I think it was enamel paint, but the end result you can see there, all of the rivet detail has come back to light. We've got all the planking detail has come back up. On the ends of the wagons, I did scrub and scrub. I don't know whether it had an undercoat of black, um, but I've got the detail back, although it does seem to have discolored some of the plastic. And again, you can see there's a weird mottling effect that's left behind on the plastic. It's not really hurt it. Uh, and on the roof as well, really struggled to get rid of the last bits around these. I didn't want to scrub too hard simply because I'd probably end up breaking them. And if you're wondering about the wheels, yes, I am aware that they've gone rusty. I will address that later on. Uh, the reason I didn't take them out is quite simply because uh, I was worried about breaking the actual W irons. It did feel like uh, it wasn't possible to get them out without causing a lot of extra damage. So we're now at a stage where I can consider what the livery of this wagon should be. I've picked out a few different colours from my Humbrol paints. Uh, I've got quite a collection that's been amassed over the years. And this one here, I think, is going to be a little bit too light to represent a BR Freight Brown. Uh, I'm not really quite sure which Humbrol colour is the closest match. That does look a little bit more like rust. And it may well be that um, some of this rusty colour might do well for painting up the uh, wheels, axles and such like. I've got this 173. If the paint itself dries like we've got on the metal lid, then that is definitely a good underframe muck colour. I've picked out matte 32 for the uh, roof. Uh, that's going to go grey. Uh, I've got matte 33 uh, and that's for touching up the chassis. And um, I was thinking about painting this in an engineer's olive green livery. So I've got matte 150 here. And uh, I think that I'm going to have a go at doing an engineer's livery. I find them a lot more interesting and it will then match this wagon up with my Daypole 08 in intercity livery. So I think the first things first, uh, I'm going to touch up the chassis with the matte black and really that's just for where some of the grey paint proved incredibly stubborn and uh, I think as well um, we're going to do some of the buffer shanks and uh, I'm going to copy the livery a little bit from some of my Backman wagons. I've got a van wide in an engineer's livery and uh, it's got this lovely olive green, grey roof, black chassis, darkened wheels um, but what's interesting is that the buffer beams and the buffer shanks are also in the olive green. So I'm going to use this as my template for starting the livery application.
I left the wagon to dry overnight and uh, this is really important to make sure when we come to overpaint any areas that uh, we're not going to find that it starts to mix and soften the previous coat underneath. It's really important when you're painting kits like this to make sure that the consistency of the paint you use is just right. You don't want it so thin that it doesn't cover properly but not so thick that it fills in and uh, globulates over any of the detail. That was precisely what the previous owner of this wagon had managed to do and with the model strip we've got all that off and you can see that with the olive green we've got much better fidelity, it's not run and uh, there's just a couple of little bits which uh, I think we're going to need to just touch up ever so slightly with the green. There are a couple of areas where the kit was damaged ever so slightly but I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. The next step is I want to paint the wheels and uh, then I'm going to put some black panels on ready for the tops lettering and numbering too. The paint on the wheels has actually come out really well, dulling them down, did the backs as you saw in the videos too. I've put a little bit of matte white on the end of the brake handle and I've painted in black the uh, panel that will just back the running number of the wagon and I'm going to have a go at painting on a fictitious tops code because I don't believe any of these wagons lasted long enough in traffic to enter the departmental fleet and my idea for this is going to be a wagon that's hidden away at some outlying depot that's been uh, appropriated for use as a stores wagon, never really goes anywhere and for whatever reason continuously overlooked in the tops lists so it is lasted and lasted and I will be doing a little bit of weathering on it as well just to make it look a little bit lived in. But luckily for us the original owner of this kit whilst they did build it to a pretty reasonable standard and not painting it to a reasonable standard they did give up in time to save us the original water slide transfers and these were in the bottom of the box uh, that it came in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use one of the running numbers up here, some of the tear weights as well and that's going to save a lot of aggravation when it comes to actually putting some kind of decoration to this wagon. So I've got a cup of lukewarm water which I'm going to be dipping the water slide transfers in for about 15 seconds and then we're going to be looking to transfer them carefully to the wagon and just uh, mopping them down with a bit of tissue just to fix them in place and if we need to I do have some matte varnish so I'm going to get on and uh, see what I can do. Transfers are now on and I found a couple more in my stash from years and years ago. So I've got Department of Engineering, the DE, at least that's what I'm going to claim that that stands for. I managed to find a store transfer as well, so I've put that on the door. We've got the 12 ton, the running number and the tear weight over at this end and I've tried to replicate it in pretty much the same position on the other side as well. So all I need now to do is the TOPS code and for this I've had a look at some of the engineers wagons that I already have in my fleet and the olive green ones are all ZRV or ZQV. So I'm going to go for uh, ZQO and uh, that I think will probably uh, fit this wagon quite well, it's not braked and for doing this I've got uh, a very old tin of Humbrol uh, matte white. The reason I've picked the really old tin rather than a much newer one is because I think the formulation on these old ones is so much better and I've picked out the tiniest uh, bristled brush that I've got and this is going to need a very steady hand so I'm going to do it off camera because I don't trust my steadiness and I might have to take a couple of goes. Actually that went a lot simpler than I expected and I got it first time so I've got the ZQO and again the same on that side and I'm going to put that down to not actually filming 
got me a, a reasonable enough steady hand that uh, I'm going to be happy with that. It's not perfect, but uh, it will do. And uh, just really now, it's a case of letting the van completely dry and then I'll move on to some weathering. As you can see, the finished result with a little bit of subtle weathering really is quite nice. And running it on the O-gauge layout that I have, it really does fit in with some of the weathered wagons and the weathered class 08 shunter. Looking every part, the neglected depot stores wagon that you might have found from the late 70s right through until the early 1990s lurking away in some of the more obscure depots on the national rail system. And it just goes to show that you can pick up a wagon or even a locomotive that has been unsympathetically finished by a previous owner for not very much. The thing is, a rubbish paint job really does devalue these items. And even though it's a kit, in good condition, you would expect them to retail at about 30 to 40 pounds in complete and painted condition. But uh, in the complete mess state that this started out in, you can pick them up for probably five to ten pounds because quite frankly most people would just walk on by. Well I hope you really enjoyed today's video and as you saw it really did come together quite nicely and with that rather subtle weathering as well we've made it look like a careworn old workhorse of the railway and it's certainly a lot better than what we started with. Thankfully the original owner left us the transfers in the box. I think they got cold feet after they'd uh, had a little bit of a calamity with the paint finish but Model Strip is such a great product. I've used it to revive models in the past and it's definitely something worth having a tub hanging around so that when you see bargains like this at the shows or in a, a model shop on the second hand table you can take a punt and it's a great fun thing to do of an afternoon to slowly bring one of these back to life so save or scrap I think we've very much saved this item but I'd love to hear from you what do you think about today's project uh, were you impressed with the way that model strip just brought that kit back to life allowing us to start again with that paint finish indeed I'd love to hear from you about your projects any items that you've managed to save in this way and I must admit that I have seen in the past people managed to get some really quite rare items items such as Hornby 00 Southern N2 tanks that had been clumsily repainted back in the day into somebody's rendition of BR Black. I actually saw somebody revive that with model strip and they went from having a £10 model to one that was worth several hundred. So it really can be done. But don't forget to tickle the like button, share this video and also subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And you can, of course, head on over to Patreon and help support the channel to make the videos that you want to see. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, 107 107, 
George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papere, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.